everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Fandom Fights. We've got a good one for you today. We got Mr. Robert Kastner going up against Abel, whose last name I can't say, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, you? There you go. We got two fun DMC members here today. Uh, and uh, they're, I think I think we're in for a good match. Uh, Abel uh, showing a lot of uh, skill this year in both teams and singles, but obviously Robert now the reigning teams champion coming in uh, to take on a, a friend and a faction mate. Uh, what do you think about the match today, Nick? Yes, Tim, very excited. This is one of these uh, matches on the way to uh, the title. Uh, the winner of this will be in a number one contender match, but uh, it is the first of two, I believe, where um, a – Seasoned competitor at this point, someone who went out in the second round uh, of the tournament, is playing a 2-0 rookie. So, uh, should Abel win this, he'll be 3-0 uh, in a contender match, which is crazy. Um, and beating someone like the current team's champion would make a huge statement. So, uh, I think we're we're in for a good one. Whoever wins. Yeah. It'll be fun. Let's go talk to them right now in the promo. You're going to have to have it. Here's the thing. You are awesome. We've seen what you do. Your opponent's a fucking chump. You could take this. How you feeling? Um, yeah, uh, I feel good. I'll be honest. I love Robert. I think he's great. Um, I sent him, uh, a, a, a present for his newborn baby who's, who's yet to be born. I don't know when this comes out. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I think he's, he's an awesome competitor and I, uh, think the world of him. So if he wins, that's a good, that's a good time. If I win, holy shit. That's how I'm approaching this. Look at Shaq the world, buddy. You can do it. Let's go. I don't, I don't have a beer to chug. That's fine. Here's the thing. Your opponent's a fucking crumb bum. You got this, buddy. You are a fucking champion. How you doing? I'm great. I uh, have been absent-minded in the last hour. Uh, if For everybody backstage, I, I had to run to get this on. I meant to, but I had forgotten. Uh, I would have gone and got Abel's gift to my future baby. I, don't, I think this will air before that happens. Uh, but I didn't have enough time. It's in another room. Uh, he's great. I don't take this for granted. It's uh, it, it's this is another one of those things where I'm sort of on the precipice and I would like to get over that if possible, but there's always somebody very tough in my way. Somebody who m most likely people would think I could beat, but something happens. I usually it's something I, I make of my own bed, but yeah. I'm trying to stay locked in focused either way. Whoever wins, we get a DMC person in a contender mm -hmm. match and that's important. Yep. Uh, Abel's great. Don't take him lightly. Yep. Uh, he's here to party, but he's also here to answer questions. And that's here's, the th here's the thing, buddy. You're a two-time champion. Yep. You fucking balls of steel. And in the immortal words of Mahatma Gandhi, kill that fucking nerd. I do. I'm, pre yeah. I'm pretty sure he said that. I don't know. Uh, My shit is not researched. So I, I captain. Nick, what'd you think of the promos? They was good. Bill was in both. How's round number one work? Round number one. It's going to work like this. Uh, we're going to give it the players 10 questions in the realm of fandom fights. Each player will have 15 seconds to write down their answer. At the end of 15 seconds, we will say pens down, at which point you will reveal your answer and say it aloud. Each correct answer is worth one point apiece, and should any individual player get all 10 questions correct in round number one, you would receive a bonus question. Each player will have three repeats, one challenge for the entirety of the match. Players, any questions at the end of round number one? Does Tim's shirt say angry or hangry? Uh, hangry. hangry. There you go. Nice. All right, first, next question one. Comes in the category of Mission Impossible. Which Mission Impossible film was the first to feature Ethan using a video camera disguised as glasses? Do you wear contacts? Not anymore. Oh, yeah, that's right. Forgot about that. You had the thing. They fixed you. They shot you with a laser. Yeah, you know how they did that? I had to stand up against a wall, and they were on the other side with, like, a laser, and they were like, Hands down. That's not true. Uh, let's go to Rob. Or I'm sorry, Abel. Ah, ah Abel. Okay, I just said Mission Impossible. And Robert. I also did, but you didn't see it before. Mission Impossible, <laughs> Mission Impossible is correct. So both 1-1 one, one as we get into your next question, which is in the category of fandom quotes. Which Marvel villain said the quote, you're good, baby. I'll give you that. But me, I'm magic. Uh, I got a little flustered there because uh, I forgot to write down the names on the boards. So I was like trying to do that. And then I just started speaking. Sometimes I say things and they're just so wrong. <laughs> Five, four, 
You have some interesting I stitch. Repeat. All right, Robert using his first repeat. Which Marvel villain said the quote, you're good, baby. I'll give you that. But me, I'm a magic. What'd you say? Said so you have a lot of Stitch themed shirts, and on each one, Stitch is doing something inappropriate to a body part of yours. What is he doing this time? He's actively trying to scratch your nipple. Oh, fair. The other one, he's he's not what? He's trying to stick his ass in my face. Yep. I have two stitched shirts, by the way. Just two. That's several. That's so many. <laughs> Four, three, two, one, pens down. Let's go to Robert. He said jigsaw. And Abel. He said Rasputin. Both incorrect. We were looking for Bullseye. Ah, Bullseye. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, uh, Nick, what's next? <laughs> Your third question comes in the category of Star Trek. Who reads aloud the charges towards Worf during his promotion ceremony at the beginning of Star Trek Generations? We've talked about this a lot, but I unironically love the 2003 Daredevil movie. Like, yeah. <laughs> and saw it when I was a kid. Yeah. Now I like it. Big, big fan. It's so <laughs> bad, but I don't know. <laughs> that's like a me and Jake Baird Goaty thing now as he always does the ah, five, four, three, two, one, pens down. Let's go to Abel. 50-50. Is it Riker? And Robert. I also said Riker. Riker is correct. All right. Your next question is going to be in the category of Disney animation. In The Princess and the Frog... Tiana wants to open what kind of business? What? I don't know. Why are you giving me that look? What look, Tim? I don't know. I'm very curious as well. A lot of meaning behind it. Well, now I have to think of something because I really just wasn't giving a look. But... Hands down, Robert. A restaurant. And Abel. Some of the best songs in Disney. Restaurant. Restaurant is correct. Three to three. What's next? Your next question comes in the category of DreamWorks Animation. Who voices Grug's wife, Ugga, in the Crudes franchise? That was a silly sentence. That was a silly sentence. Is that what you said? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to name my daughter Ugga. <laughs> Five. That'd be a great choice. Three. Two, one, pens down. You were named after a mediocre film, daughter. Uh, let's go to Abel. Uh, I said Catherine Keener. And Robert. Catherine Keener. Both are correct. So keep in pace, still tied, as we get into your next question in the category of Wizarding World. Name one of the three first names of the people who Harry, Ron, and Hermione impersonate in order to infiltrate the Ministry in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, Part 1. Yep. What's that look for, Tim? Why don't you tell me what you were going to say? I was going to say something about the question, and I, I've been advised not to do that by you, so I held my tongue. Say something else. I'll go. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Robert. I said Reg. And uh, Abel. Yeah, no, I said Vern. I think we can take Reg. Yeah, yeah. she's called a Reg in that. So, Robert. We'll take uh, the one-point lead. The other options were Albert and uh, Mafalda, and then Reginald. So, uh, Nick, what is next? Your next question comes in the category of Disney live action. In the Santa Claus 3, the escape clause, what does Jack Frost do to Lucy's parents once she tries to tell them about his plan to become Santa? It's got to be a tough job. Again. With and there's two different jobs in school. Yeah. Actually, technically, there's three because there's yeah, this Santa Claus being a parent and then being a parent and Jack Frost. So that's with, a hard one. And you said once again that was the last match. Well, Tim, <laughs> it's called um, an Easter egg, and Five. the people can now Four. go look and be like, Three. they were wearing the same Two. thing. 
One, hands down. I'm going to start changing shirts when we have multiple matches. Uh, throw Payson off his scent. Uh, let's go to Abel. I'm proud to say I've never seen this movie. Freeze is dead. And uh, uh, Robert. Well, you haven't, but it's that obvious because it's freezes them. Yeah, that is correct. So six to five as we get into your next question in the category of Pixar. Which Pixar film features a runaway train that is uncontrollably traveling backwards at high speeds? Uh, I will say train, underrated uh, mode of transportation. I agree. I really want to take a. I really want to take one of those trains that like takes like three days to get where you're going, and you have to like stay in a room on the train. Yeah, I want to give that a try. Five. I would need an extra. That actually sounds terrible, but I would need an extra large room. Pens down. Let's go to Robert. Incredibles two. And um, I said Inside Out. Incredibles two is correct. So. Uh, Robert will gain another point, <laughs> making it seven to five. Sorry, I was laughing at what was happening in the back. Sorry. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Uh, go ahead, Nick, for the next question. Your penultimate question comes in the category of horror icons. In the original A Nightmare on Elm Street, Nancy falls asleep in class, has a nightmare, and wakes up with what kind of injury on her arm? Were you a guy that slept through class? No. In high school, even? No, I was a very good student in high school. I slept in class a lot. Oh, Tim, you're not supposed to do that. The only time I've ever sort of drifted, like, really badly was in college. Okay. And I was right. a little... Three. I had fun the night before, and I shouldn't what? have been in class. Hands down. Uh, let's go to Abel. I said a burn mark. And Robert. Oh, I said scratches. Burn is correct. So Abel will cut into that lead a little bit, making it seven to six. As we get into your final question of the round, which is going to be in the category of scores and soundtracks, who composed the score for Escape from the Planet of the Apes? No perfect rounds here today, Nick. Can have you ever escaped from the Planet of the Ape? Um... If, if if you count the Burkala Christmas, a planet of apes, then... You better hope they don't watch this. <laughs> oh, five. I'm going to tell them. Three, it. two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Robert. I said Leonard Rosenman. And Abel. That's what I was thinking of. I said Elliot Goldenthal, but I meant... The other Both one. incorrect. We were looking for Jerry Goldsmith. Oh, yeah. really? Jerry G's, as they say. So, uh... Robert leads round number one, seven to six. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. All right. Robert has two repeats remaining. Abel has all three. Why don't you tell us how round number two is going to work? Round number two is going to work like this. It is the wheel round. We have eight fan of categories as well as spinners and opponents' choice on a wheel. Each player is going to spin at the wheel. If they like what they spin the first time, they can keep it. If not, they can choose to spin again, but they will be forced to keep what they spin the second time. Look at five questions in the chosen category, each worth two points apiece, unless they'd like to check down to multiple choice, in which case it will only be worth one. Uh, and be on the lookout as stealing is available in round number two. Tim, what's on the wheel today? On the wheel today is Middle Earth, DC, Pixar, Alien vs. Predator, Horror Icons, Scores and Soundtracks, YA, and Mission Impossible. Uh, so, Robert, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer to Abel? What do you want to do, bud? Usually... I mean, I'll, I'll probably defer in this case. So. Okay, this will be the spin for Abel. Then. It's good. I really wanted to go first. When Spinners comes up, it'll be great. Lands on Middle Earth. Would you like to keep that or spin again? Uh, I'm going to keep that, sir. Okay. Okay. You got about to do it. All right, Nick, you want to go ahead and give Abel his questions in Middle Earth? Gladly, Abel. Are you prepared for your questions in the category of Middle Earth? Let's see. It's been a while. All right, your first question. Which Middle Earth film features characters using a giant bell to knock down a wall? Five, four, three. Um, the two. Hobbit Battle of the Twelve Armies. That's correct for two points. 
Abel, your second question. Who voices the Goblin King in The Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey? Oh. Five. Four. Alien dude. Uh, multiple choice. All right, your multiple choice options are, is it A, Stephen Fry, B, Ricky Gervais, C, Barry Humphreys, or D, John Oliver? Barry Humphreys, final answer. That is correct for one point. Yeah. I'll, really your third, I'll your third question. In the Fellowship of the Ring, Bilbo makes what drink for Gandalf when he visits the Shire before the party? Uh, tea. That is correct for two points. Your penultimate question. In the Desolation of Smaug, which dwarf does Legolas speak with about pictures they have in their possession while in Mirkwood? Glowing. That is correct for two points. And Abel, your final question. In The Return of the King, how does Denethor believe Faramir was killed when he tries to burn him? Shot with arrows. And that is correct for two more points and the clean sweep of Middle Earth. All right, so Abel gets his total up to 15 to Robert 7. Is that what you have? That's what I have, Tim. All right, we'll bring back the wheel and Mr. Carriola. That guy got lucky. You're going to kill Robert. Don't worry about it. <sighs> All right, this is the spin for Robert. Also, Abel, you killed a great job. I love how impartial you are, bro. Yes. It lands on scores and soundtracks, which is you better spin again. I mean, this, this could get Newton to orbit for all I care about how you feel. So last time I got this, I went perfect, but I just missed that scores question. So most likely I should probably spin again, but yeah, I don't think there's too much in this wheel. I hate for you, honestly. So yeah, yeah, that's fine. All right. We'll spin again, please. All right. This is what you are stuck with. And it is a free spin. Hmm. And it lands on spinner's choice. Woo! What do you want, bud? It's all you. It's your world. Go for it. Um, can I just see that go down the down the list? Yeah, please, just to see them. I might go AVP or yeah. YA. What do you think? I think AVP is good for you. You you, you, you can get that. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go Alien versus Predator, please. Yeah, go for it. All right, Robert, I will give you your questions in Alien versus Predator. Are you ready? Yep. All right, your first question. Which Alien vs. Predator film features a large, perfectly circular tunnel leading deep underground? Alien vs. Predator? That is correct, for two points. Your next question. Who plays crewman Brett in Alien? Harry Dean Stanton. That is correct for two points. Your third question. In Predator 2, how does Mike Harrigan kill the Predator? I'm going to multiple choice this one, please. All right, your options are A, stabs him, B, decapitates him, C, blows him up, or D, lights him on fire. Gonna say stabs him. That is correct for one point. Your fourth question What is the name of the device that the predator brought to Earth for the humans to use, revealed at the very end of Shane Black's The Predator? Predator killer? That is correct for two points. That dumb. <laughs> it's the dumbest part of that entire fucking stupid movie. I disagree, but we can talk about it after. <laughs> okay, it sounds good. All right, your final question. In Alien Covenant, crewman Ledward, the first to be infected, contracts an alien parasite when it enters through what specific part of his body? Shit. 
multiple choice, please. All right, your options are A, ear, B, nose, C, eye, or D, mouth. Can I get a repeat of the options, please? Yes, you can. Is it A, ear, B, nose, C, eye, or D, mouth? Ear. That is correct for one point. And Nick, if I'm not mistaken, we are all tied up at 15. We're going to round number three. Good job. Indeed we are, Tim. Would you like to know how round three works? Nick, I would love that more than I would love another beer. I can round three. <laughs> you and Maggie just gave me the same look. <laughs> round number three. It's going to work like this. Uh, we have five more questions in the realm of fandom. Oh, it's called the betting round. We have five more questions in the realm of fandom fights. Once the players hear the category, they can bet anywhere between zero and two points on the question. If they got the question correct, they will gain those points. If they got the question incorrect, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Players, any questions as we get into round number three? No. All right. Well, then the first category you can bet points on is going to be... It's my favorite. It's Middle Earth. Let's get bets, starting with Robert. Two. And Abel. Today. All right, your question in the category of Middle Earth. In how many Middle Earth films do goblins appear? Okay, so I make the joke a lot. Like, if I do the, oh, it's my favorite. It's either one of one or two, one or the other. Uh, what is, like, once and for all, Nick, say it. What is your favorite category in fandom? Um, you get spinner's choice of any category. What do you take it? Five. Four. Like right now? Yes, two. Probably M C one. Pens down. That's fair. Uh, that's what I would say. Uh, Robert. Set three. And Abel. I also said three. You both are wrong. The answer is four. The movies being The Fellowship of the Ring, An Unexpected Journey, Battle of the Five Armies, and 1978's The Lord of the Rings. Battle of the Five Armies is one that I completely forgot. Yep, me too. So uh, we are still tied up at 13. Is that what you have, Nick? That's what I have, Tim. Yep. All right, your next category is what? Uh, Disney Animation. Let's get that starting with Abel. Uh, let's go for two. Okay, and Robert. I'm also going for two. All right, Nick, what is the question? The question is Disney animation. Which Disney animated film features the characters Pablo the Penguin, Burrito, Jose, and Panchito? You think if we had just said the first two names, maybe they wouldn't have written it down so fast? I don't know. I don't know either. Five. What are you having second thoughts? Three, two, one, pens down. No, I just wrote this question. I'm like, oh, maybe I made it too easy. Uh, let's go to Abel. Said uh, the three caballeros. And uh, Robert. I also said the three caballeros. And you both are correct. Two of those names were two of the three caballeros. So good job. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we are back up to 15 all as we get into the third category, which is going to be the category of Planet of the Apes. Let's get back, starting with Robert. Two. And Abel. Keep this train moving. All right. Your question in the category of Planet of the Apes. What is the name of the gorilla general that wants to invade the Forbidden Zone for its potential food source? In beneath the planet of the apes. Um, so I am drinking out of a cup, out of a beer glass that I got in uh, 2017 at the theater I worked at. It is uh, advertising the uh, smash summer hit, The Hitman's Bodyguard. You've showed me that before. What'd you say? You've showed me that one before. Yeah. It's very odd that you choose to use it so often. Two. One, pens down. I used to use it for mixed drinks a lot. Uh, let's go to Robert. I said Ursus. And Abel. I said Abel. Ursus is correct. So Robert will go up to 17. Abel will go down to 13. It is a four-point game. Two questions remaining. What's the penultimate category name? The penultimate category is Pixar. 
Let's get bets starting with Abel. Set two. Okay, and Robert. One. Oh, right. you're no fun. I know. Nick, what's the question? Question in Pixar. In Onward, what piece of Barley's van falls off and allows Officer Colt to follow their trail up into the mountains? I need to do a Pixar rewatch. It's been a minute. Mm. I, I like think I've movies. watched a total of like 45 minutes of TV and movies this entire week. That's fair. And it's been for like the five to 10 minutes before Three, I fall asleep. Two, one, pens down. We're going to start with Abel. I said license plate. And Robert. I said bumper. And your winner, Robert. Kastner, the answer was bumper. Uh, so, Nick, a final score of 18 to 11, I believe. But um, I think we can accept license plate also. Not that it, it doesn't change. Like, Robert still wins because he oh. reads the license plate and they go. So, for what it's worth, I Abel got that last question right as well. Okay. But, um, final score would be 18 to 15. 15 yeah, and we'd still be done anyway. Okay, that's fair. Well, hey whatever uh but anyway no very good match i think both uh guys played really well abel crushing round number two and robert having a really good uh, round number two as well went to multiple choice a couple times but still crushed it both having uh really good matches overall i think this this was an excellent match it just kind of came down to those uh that one question in round uh uh three that kind of split the 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 tie there is kind of what sealed the deal but really good match yeah, no, this this was intent. Let's talk to I'll I'll tell the people about it. Let's, you know, in the future. Abel, Phil. I do. Phil, totally impartial. Uh, yeah, man, totally. Well Fantastic. Uh, Abel played really great, man. You came in uh, doubting yourself, I believe, calling it like it would have been incredible or unexpected had you done this. But I think you just sort of proved that those scenarios won't really happen anymore because you're probably going to be coming in the favorite for some people now. Because even though you're two and one, even though you lost to Robert, who was the number one ranked seed in the tournament um, and is the current team's champion. You still took him very far into round three and you were tied coming out of round two. So you've proven you can hold your own um, in this league. So how are you feeling uh, about the match? I feel great, man. It's always good playing here. You guys are awesome. Bill's awesome. Robert's awesome. It's all great. Uh, happy vibes. I like playing here. I think Robert did a great job and I'm glad that I can hang with him. That's pretty much all, all I was shooting for. And uh, yeah. Um, good shit. Good Here's yeah. the thing: everyone in this league should take note. My man here, this guy fucks. That's true. absolutely yes. That's true. Way to silence those doubters, man. Did you the wrong way? <laughs> I, I'm not looking here when I'm doing. The, my shit is not practiced out, guys. That's just fair. You know this. It's fair. Uh, um, this likely ends your singles run for this year. We will see you back next year, but prior to that. Uh, you and Antonio will be uh, making a return, uh, possibly in the team's tournament, pending a future event. Uh, but should we see you, we will see you and Antonio again in teams uh, at some point. So how are you feeling about coming back in teams? Listen, I love playing teams. Antonio is an awesome teammate. Uh, he always does really well. We just had a match in a different league where we did really well. And uh, I always love playing with Antonio. I love, like I said, I think fandom is a great league. And uh, I have a great time. Just playing here. So, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll see you back in your next match for sure. Uh, congratulations on a great rookie year as we bring in our winner today. Moving on to a number one contender match. Uh, his, no, because the five way, that would count. I was going to say his first, but no, the five way would count. So, his second number one contender match for singles. Um, possibly looking for a little uh, double belted action here, but I don't want to jinx things too early. But Robert Kastner uh, winning. Uh, a great match over what proved to be a very difficult opponent uh, in Abel. Um, but you kept your head on straight uh, and you got the job done where it needed to be done, sir. How are you feeling? So you both have been here for the entirety of me playing in this league. And even just a month ago, that's probably a match I lose because I get into my head a little bit. We're tied. I, I got spinner's choice and I knew stabbed and doubted myself. And then as to be expected in that Alien Covenant question, the two answers, which are the two answers for what happens, were on there. I was like, what one happens first? I don't remember. Fortunately, I guessed right on that one. Um, there's only two things I'm a little upset about. The Planet of the Apes um, 
the uh, scores and soundtracks question because I could have done a repeat and got Jerry Goldsmith. I, you know, it's one of those things. Goldsmith did the first, then Roseman did the second, and then you were it, it goes in the same order, so you just have to remember that. Uh, and then the Goblin one, it's just uh, I should have guessed four. I had three in my head, and when you get one of the rules of this sometimes is that if you know if you're not sure and you get to a certain number, maybe guess one over it because it's probably one you're forgetting. And that's what I did. But otherwise, uh, I'm feeling great. I'm seven and two. So that's a, that's a great record. Uh, that's what I wanted. Everything after this is sort of gravy. Double belts is crazy to think about um, because I think I still weirdly think of myself as an outsider in this league, even though the whole thing of multiplex um, because I'm not like a Kingsman or I wasn't in the first order or anything. So this was great. Abel took me the distance. I know he was good. He got his strength. I got a strength. It, it, it's just, like I said, this is the kind of match I would usually lose because I would second guess myself. And I didn't do that this time, fortunately. And we're on to a number one contender match again. That's crazy. Yeah. Bill thoughts. I mean, this guy right here fucking somewhere. I don't, I don't know directions, man. I'm not a fucking compass, but here's the thing. This guy's the goods. There's a reason why he's not only a two time champion. He's also got some award hardware to prove it. That uh, you know what? I'm, I'm glad to see you're finally getting over like the yips that you had there recently, yeah. man. You fucking killed it. Hey, Abba was no slouch. We knew, like, we all knew this going in. I mean, he's fantastic. Just things went a little more right for you today, and I couldn't be happier, man. You're fucking. I don't even care who you're playing. Fucking just beat him. Speaking of uh, Robert, you'll be moving on to a contender match against either. Mm -hmm. Um. Jeremy Potters, another 2 0 rookie who would be a 3 0 rookie should you be seeing him. No. Or former champion Thomas Scully. Um, I heard of him. Those two will be playing. You will play the winner, sir. Preferences, thoughts? Uh, so, Jeremy, uh, I know he has a thing about understanding Canadians. I saw that in a match that just aired recently. So, that's good. Mm. Um, Scully, when the first tournament happened last year, we were in a we're on the same side of the bracket and I thought we were going to meet up. I, and I think if you, and I don't want to put words in people's mouths or the admins, but I think when people were putting together bracket uh, prognostications, I think that was what people had thought. And I screwed it up because I lost to Butler because I didn't know fandom Oscars, but you know what? Fandom Oscars doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately. And uh, so I think that would be really fun. I think if you sort of broke down where the league is, I think Joe and Brittany are sort of at the top. And I don't think I think that's sort of unassailable. But then I think under that, I think Scully, me and a few others are sort of vying for that next tier, sort of. So I think that would be good. Either way, it will be tough, obviously. All right, man. Well, I'm excited to see it. I think it's going to be uh, quite the matchup. And I think either one of or either one of you three would uh, give uh, Joe a run for their money. So I'm looking forward to it. And we'll see you next time, Robert. Congratulations on the win. Tim, put a bow on it. Yeah, really great match. Abel and Robert both playing great, but Robert, um, I think, yeah, going for for double beltage would be very interesting. I'd be very interested to see that, um, and we'll see uh, who he's going to play very soon. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but that's going to do it for us today. Thank you to Nick for writing this one. Thank you to all the players and the manager, as uh, this was a fantastic match, so thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Fandom Fights. Bye-bye. We are so glad you came. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. But again, that's the hero gig. Part of the journey is the end. Goodbye, old friend. Giddy has to go.